spin seems to be dominating the phase of play and Afridi lends them so much of strength in a run chase you don't want five wickets to go down in the first 10 hours that just falls the progress missing the stumps quicker delivery from Imad So what's, what are the options here for Shoaib Malik? He's 6 of 6. He's lost wickets. And so it's going to be tough. It's to be like an Uber. Just carry on and on and gather steam and pace and get over the line. Uh, must not play him off the back foot. Must not play him through the point area is quick doesn't spin the ball much slides them in mm -hmm. oh, escaping. just two runs so far in this over wonderfully bowl the required rate has jumped to over 12 79 for five he's so accurate he bowls from wider of the stumps then gets it to dip a bit and then from that angle to spin it across towards the off stump is really a magnificent angle I mean so I reckon he's leg breaks turning more I reckon it's it's a bit slow and it's turning more which you know Generally, it's the toppy and the, the wrong end. And that's bowled through the gate. Boom, boom. Says, come back soon to Shoaib Malik. The big fish. The skipper's got to go. Just talking him up about what he has to do to kick on because the asking rate is over 12 and a half. The pressure of the scoreboard mounting. Very wide on the crease here. Shard Afridi. Look at the slider that goes on and disturbs the woodwork. It's not as wrist spin, it's that one that goes on with the angle and skids on in. Beautiful piece of bowling from Boom Boom Afridi. 6 1 down now. It's Mullock for just half a dozen. It's 79 for 6. Batting looks in tatters. 110 required of 52 Afridi with a tremendous bowling spell 3 for 15 getting it to tweak bowling sliders and wrong one completely on top of his bowling game yeah, fascinating to see Boom Boom Afridi still uh, weaving his craft and wide out on the crease landing with that back foot fascinated to see in terms of getting out Pollard and uh, now getting out showed Mullick it's that back foot doesn't plant actually doesn't cut that back line gee it's close though because we're uh, checking out the rules the laws of the game oh it's close if that crosses it it touches. We'll have a look at that. I want to clarify that more shortly, Rambo. I'm just enjoying his bowling. I'm not worried about whether he's cutting the back line or not. Just Where are you from? I'm. I'm <laughs> the, the saner one. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it together. Yeah, it is close, but he's fine. So get on with it. It's a great spell, that is for sure. It's a wicked maiden from Afridi. 79 for 6. Henley with a bit of leg spin. Could he be as potent as Shahid Afridi? Afridi has been outstanding. 
Pollard dismissal, Malik dismissal. Both fair deliveries. So the scrutiny is on the back leg, whether that back leg is cutting the sideline. And on both occasions, it's fine. So it must be fine if it's raised. Oh, if yes. it was actually planted, it would be a no ball. I think he's perfected this. Oh, Freedy, it just keeps that heel over the line. That's gone. Six. He's a very fine striker of the ball. Left-hander Soil Tanvir has opened his account with a six. Not a bad way to open your account, just quietly. Starting off with a big six. The part-time leg spin of Denley. Not threatening Tanvir at all. All he is threatening is... To hit a crowd catch, Pepsi catch a craw potentially. That's a beautiful strike. Oh, he gets some width and he doesn't put that away. Oh, direct hit would have certainly been a close affair. Still, they're going to have a referral. It was well collected by Rezwan the keeper on the bounce he feels that he's he's secure that they've got a real good case in their favor and they have the zingers are out of the groove yeah see on the big screen he's looking up there the pavilion and he's uh, disappearing rather quickly hardest pavilion you can see it on the big screen before the decision was made just for a couple seventh one down now for 86 will ball the last oh, yeah. all of his first over useful over and it's 87 for seven so it was a maiden over oh there's that quicker one <laughs> almost floated him Imran Tahir lost his balance. Did we get a pace on that one? That looked lightning. 140 clicks. <laughs> I was going to say 150. 126 kilometers an hour. That's not bad at all. That's a up pace delivery. Same up. Boom. Boom. Uh, Freddy is the is the only bowler in PSL to bowl four maiden overs this year. Let's see where they can deliver another six dots. Yeah, slower in pace this time. So from 126 clicks to maybe 80. Well, we've got half those dots, Rambo. So I'm not surprised that over the seasons of PSL, Afridi has uh, racked up so many maidens and he's in the groove, he's positive, he's enjoying his bowling, loving being here. Just a little wide, oh, in fact given as a wide. That was marginal, I, I'm not too sure whether that was a real wide one and Afridi is contesting the point with the umpire. You never win that contest do you as a bowler? Uh, no chance, no hope for Imran Tahir playing across the line. The ball is gripping and spinning. So when Afridi gets it to spin, you know that the pitch is helping the spinners. Good Not a same spin. though for that break, isn't it? Angling towards first slip. Oh, I really like spinners facing other spinners. It's competitive. Enjoyed right, the spell from uh, Afridi. Because he's flighted the ball, he's bowled the faster one, the wrong ones. We've seen the entire range, the gamut of his of his skills, and so it's. And then he's been accurate as well. Three for seventeen against a side that plays spin better. Oh, 
Last one, the wrong gun. He finishes his spell. Three for 18 of his four. Reedy is bowling. That's well left. <laughs> it's unique, isn't it? Good leave. Pollard wicket. Was well, he think... cutting the sideline? I think that's the point that's been debated. And he wasn't. Yeah, I think he was fine there. He needed to see it a lot. It was close. But uh, Pollard just maybe uh, debating that. Side on. Well, it's interesting because Pollard quite often... Oh, wow. That's in the slot. Great strike. Ten. Veer. Another six to him. 224th six of the tournament and that must have traveled over 100 meters this really was high and long hit the top tier i think oh, buddy. such a sweet sweet strike it'll take you that area and it's long and straight and quite see it there in that angle but uh, certainly lots of debate about back foot landing cutting and planting but it's certainly not so he's uh, doing all right Shada Freedy it's interesting because Corin Pollard's one bowler that threatens that back foot no ball rule as well bowling wide of the crease end of the 15th over it's 97 for 7 There we go, Galutlo timeout. The strategic timeout is now over. And we're ready for the final phase of this first T20 match today. We've got uh, another one following. But, uh, it is uh, all downhill here for the Multan Sultans. They've lost momentum in HBL PSL. Here we go. We've been talking a lot about this back foot no ball law. And the only point that you need to know is that if the first impact of that foot is within the return crease and not touching the line, then it is a legitimate delivery. At that point, if the toe is inside the line and it's raised and then it, and then it cuts the line, it's still legitimate. But if that first point of contact with the back foot is on that line, it's a no ball. So after that you can drag it onto the line and do whatever but it's that first impact so if it's raised only the first impact counts so the law is written like this law 21.5 for a delivery to be fair in respect of the feet in the delivery stride 21.5.1 the bowler's back foot must land within and not touching the return crease so the confusion there is for those of you who think well the first point is within the return crease but the foot now lands down and cuts the return crease then that is deemed a no ball well it's not is uh, the understanding of that law two slips so they've gone ultra aggressive here the Kings to try and wrap it up they've played uh, a superb game today lots of smiles for Karachi Kings as you'd expect been a happy day Usually, isn't it to see two slips and a gully and a bowl? There's number eight, and uh, it is Amir with a fantastic Yorker. Around the wicket doesn't often go around the wicket, and he's gone straight for that Yorker. A little bit of bad on it, Imran Tahir got bad on it, but it dragged it onto the stumps. Reverse swing. Beautiful seam there from Mohamed Amir, and it's the seam that took it all the way down its course. And uh, 
Even top order batsmen can't keep that one out. Tahir 2, 98 for 8. Move to 3. Mohamed Amir, that was a beautiful delivery. It's his first wicket for the day, but it was a Yorker seam up coming back. Here we go. We've got the laws out. There is a lot of interpreting this back foot, no ball. They are um, trying to find out what is going on and what does cutting the line mean? I think that's the point. Now, what does cutting the line, that return crease, mean? And the cutting of the line is first point of contact cutting the line. <laughs> the wording is, isn't it? Land within and not touching. Not touching. Cutting, I think, is implies the foot is on the turf. Touching, cutting. Ending, 99 for 8. No ball. So, uh, two wickets remaining for the Kings to get off the park early. They're four overs. And it is 90 runs or 24 balls, so 22.5 runs and over. It's uh, a conclusion that we know in a return to form for the Kings. And that's number nine. A little bit of a juggle at mid-wicket. And Denley is featured in a couple of really good catches throughout the PSL. And he juggles them nicely also. Another one. Easy for Karachi this time. The angle into the right-hander. From Irfan Jr. Just getting the ball to Jack back in. Junaid Khan trying to smash it, but short mid-wicket in place. Denley's had a fantastic game. It is uh, two for five. And uh, uh, three for five. And the big fella is out there. Irfan, we've got two tall individuals going at it. The batsman just a little tall. Perhaps he catch a crawl. We saw a two or three catches taken in the stands yesterday. So last time, if you're still confused, first point of impact with the back foot inside. And because the foot is up, if he was flat footed, and everything touched at the same time and cutting the crease, no ball. Make sense? Flat footed, first point. Could be the whole rubber on the bottom of the foot. Cutting the crease, no ball. Toe inside like that, heel raised. It's not a no ball. It's a legitimate delivery. Really dance later, but um, there's been so much discussion about that right foot. A free these right foot being discussed all throughout the ground. People confused still. Oh, he's let that one go right over the top of middle stump. The big fella thought he was bowling, trusting the bounce. Extra bounce. Oh, was that missed the bowl? The bounce. Here we go. Look, short of a good length. He just says, oh, yeah, it's going to bounce enough. And it did. Good judgment, big fella. So it's uh, junior versus senior for South Pakistan. Milke Lagayenge John. Yeah, it's funny how you, you sort of get tested with the law and its interpretation and the wording of cutting the line is the confusion, I think, there, Bass, that you, know, you can see that his heel is actually over the return crease but that first point of impact so pretty sure we'll have sorted it for the remainder also because of the actual no ball the pop increase when you do that then it's termed that your foot is behind the line so it just confuses you a little bit more exactly right nice ball of the over uh, it's been taken to the onside. They are going to take two. And it'll bring up the 100 for Moltar. Gee, it's been a struggle, hasn't it? We got off to a fairly good start, but then too many wickets. 101 for nine. And 
and uh, he'll be bowling to Tamvir, who's 15 from 17 deliveries faced. Oh, that's out of here. That is a really good strike. He's used the angle into the pads and just gone with it. That is Soel Tanvir's zone over square leg. He loves lifting that ball through there. The drop kick, but slow one and Amir. Yeah, he wanted to have a word, but you've been smashed for a six. And staying with the one slip. Got to have the slip in there, of course. And he goes short on this occasion, Amir. Just changing the length. And uh, there's some fiery moments in the game of cricket, we know that. And uh, Mohamed Amir, not pleased with that shot at all. <laughs> and clapping him, here we go. He's telling him what he's going to bowl. He said, well, I'll have a free hit. Top edge over the keeper. And that frustrates Amir so well. And he's going, good shot, good shot. Right back at you. <laughs> oh, a little bit fiery. Didn't get out of control. You love that, don't you? Well, bowler has a go. But I quite liked what Mohammed Amir was doing. He just say, oh yeah, good shot, good shot. Given that it was frustrating. The Karachi Kings had a lot of powerful batting today. This man came in and he just, from ball one, starting hitting it out of the park really smashed it a long way 29 or just eight with huge hits we know he's capable we know he's powerful but today it was all on yeah and that's why we've seen 188 scored because they had the phases it was a slow burn at the start and then everyone just picked up the pace and then you had the finisher so well you could argue it was a little slow at the start we've seen the record total for hbl psl3 and uh, an outstanding display and return to form for karachi kings who looked outstanding at the start of this tournament then they drifted off but as mickey arthur said they had that washout there was a few days where they didn't play and he felt that that was the reason they lost a bit of momentum as well as he mentioned the confusion and all this emphasis on the late game and due talking a lot about the due and not fielding second and all you know, the wet ball and he says i think we've overplayed that coming up next will be uh, Peshawar Zalmi. they need to turn things around and quite gladiators who have got themselves going nicely Owner is really happy. It's been a comprehensive performance from Karachi Kings. Bowling, batting, feeling set up by that huge toru. Three slips again. Good bowling. There's the York. <laughs> always hard for a guy seven foot to keep them out, but he does. 110 for nine. Through the legs, nearly hitting leg stump. That was nearly it, all over. Still going, It'll probably go all night. We've seen lots of discussions about a free these back foot. It's just everybody needs clarification. So maybe they should have a, a press conference or a huge round table conference. Oh, I think with these sort of practical things, you need to get out there to the middle, you need to get on that return crease, and you need the official to show exactly. With a foot that's okay, which is a Freedies, and a foot that's cutting the line, therefore back foot no ball.
Yeah, just um, stats with the back end of the well, this tournament moving on, we've seen a lot of more batsmen timing the ball better. Especially the overseas players now have got in terms or in sync with the pace of the pitch or the conditions and, and we've seen what they're capable of. The scoring rate has gone up, the runs have gone up and batting first has been the preference now and maybe it's just getting used to all these foreign conditions and we'll see more big scores from here on end. And they all come from different parts of the world as you say they've just come out of playing let's say big bash league in australia on it australia's quicker bouncier pitches and whether it's the west indies whether it's the pitches in pakistan in the domestic competition you're right it's it does take a little bit of time to get used to the pace and bounce Oh, it's down the throat of the man in the deep, but it'll be a no ball, I think, because of the height. And now there's a run out. <laughs> now the umpires are going to confer and just work out what has actually gone on there. The celebrations in the Karachi camp, but... Um debate on whether this is high enough to be legitimate or low enough to be legitimate delivery so probably go upstairs and ask oh here we go more interpretation <laughs> it's either the end of the match or uh, it'll be called a no ball they'll have taken a single well, they didn't take the single in the end, and it will be a free hit the next one. So that's what we're trying to work out right now. Now, the height needs to be above waist for it to be a no ball. You be the judge. It's coming down, it's coming down. I think that's going to be borderline. <laughs> Your interpretation, Bess? <laughs> Borderline. We need Alan Wilkins to give his interpretation. Yeah, no ball. So it's a free hit. And it's another chance for Soel Tanvi to hit a maximum. He has the most sixes in PSL 3 for a batsman of number 8 and below. No ball. Well, writing's on the wall, but at least Tanvir has a chance to swing from the hip. Oh, nicely played down the ground. He really did get hold of that. So he's utilised the free hit. It's all too late, but it's a lusty blow with a straight blade. The highest scorer in this innings is Soel Tanvir and a fantastic flat six down the ground. Does possess the quality of hitting these maximums, but that's one of his better ones. Aggression there, Irfan Jr. He follows it up with a bit of a walk through and a stare. One ball remaining in the 19th. Might be frustrated. He thought it was uh, not a no ball. It's a good length there, that Yorker. Never out of his ground. And he did the right thing, I think, to here, just getting away from the stumps. For Multan Sultans, this will mean that they've got just nine points after nine games. And this game all down to Shahid Khan of Freedy's brilliant spell. Another one of those shots straight over the keeper's head. Couple of bounces into the rope. And uh, further frustration for the bowler, but I think the Kings will be fairly relaxed. One, two, one. It's not like you see Tom Moody shaking his head or getting too animated. No, they'll be thinking how to turn things around 
how to try and reinvigorate the side because they've played well they're on nine points the, the last couple of performances have been well below par here's uh, Usman oh chance at the non-strikers end that a chance maybe the end of the game right there so Elton we wanted the strike he's hitting them well you might have seen maybe just got back but just on that that's they looked as as if they would the runaway group winners Multan when they started and it's just fascinating with these longish tournaments in T20 how many twists and turns within the team or within the teams come about oh the French cut always effective Yeah, it's, a, it, it, it's the side you're up against who has the most complete 40 overs out there that's going to win the side, win, win the game most of the time. Occasionally you might get lucky and not play well for five overs and have an individual or two who can recover from that. But it's the teams like Lahore that just can't piece 20 overs with the bat together, 20 overs with the ball together. And that's where they've let themselves stand. They probably play good 10-10. They've they've really competed for say 10 overs with the bat, and and a lot in the field. So it's just that complete package you're after. And Multan at the moment they're just off in the the completion of a match. Yeah, a bit of thinking to do because. Um at one stage they were deemed favorites to top the group Karachi just come back important victory here for them and just seems as if Multan have just gone off the boil a tad Chance of a run out. Oh, great finish for the Kings. Denley the man. And it was bang on target. Irfan. The big fella was trying to get some gusto up in those legs. And uh, he doesn't get there. In fact, with the length of arms, there was no sliding of the bat. So that will complete the innings. And a big, big win to Karachi Kings. bat these days but uh, it was 24 to Shazad a bit of aggression at the crease as well Tengakara 18 but really nothing else you have Tanvir as your highest scorer you know you're in trouble 34 from 29 and all out 125 and the big wickets have gone to that man Afridi who uh, 38 years of age is still bowling beautifully Three for 18, two for 18, Irfan a junior, one apiece to uh, Ahmad, Amir and Usman. So it was such an imposing, in fact, uh, the highest total we've seen so far in the PSL. 188 for three, setting a new standard. And Multan only managing 125, and they crawled to 125 as well. So the Kings have won by 63 runs. It's time to go to a break. We've got uh, game number two around the corner, of course, but uh, we'll be back in studio and the presentation, as always. <laughs>